I saw this duo perform at a conference in Kingston earlier this year and immediately thought, wow, that is different. Michael Bridge, that's him on the right, he plays the accordion, and Cornel Volak, he's on the left, he plays the clarinet, and together they make music as you've never heard it before. So let's welcome Bridge and Volak to TVO and learn some more. Hello guys, great to see you again. Hello, good evening everyone. Good morning. Let's just tell a bit of your story here. How did you end up picking up that instrument in the first place? How many years ago? Oh, well, I wouldn't like to reveal that, well, um, because that would definitely <laughs> put me in this. I know, Cornell, you're in your 40s, so okay. Uh, well, after having that stated, yeah. <laughs> you know, I picked up in this instrument when I was 11 or 12. And how come? Which, how come? Uh, because I stopped um, being inspired to play piano anymore. I started on the piano back in Poland. Um, however, at some point, lonely hours of practice, um, were not inspiring enough, so I said, you know, if I need to have a secondary instrument, I'll pick the clarinet. And so I did. There was only one teacher in my school. It was a very small school, a local music school, and uh, the beginnings were very, very rough. At the beginning, I was uh, not very happy playing the clarinet, but then I had another teacher who actually was incredibly inspiring and who taught me a lesson for life, which is how important is the right pedagogy. Mm. So half of my heart is in performance and the other half is in pedagogy. And I never, um, I never avoid teaching young people, inspiring them. And that's in what country. you do now. That's what I do You're now. You're teaching at Queens now. Yes, okay. I am the assistant uh, clarinet professor um, at uh, Queens University in Kingston, Terrific. where I have a clarinet studio. Michael, how did you end up picking? Well, the accordion you would have picked up, I guess, originally was not like that. Not quite. No. No, my first accordion was much smaller, only 12 buttons on the left hand. Actually, my mom bought it at a garage sale on a whim for $5 in Calgary when I was five years old. And a family friend was my first teacher. And then after that, just one thing led to another. I, uh, I got a very good teacher in Calgary. Um, as Cornell was saying, we were both blessed to have very good teachers from a young age, me from about seven onwards on accordion. And then I started performing and competing internationally and then wanted to go further with the accordion than to play it and treat it merely as a folk instrument. And what we do is we call it concert music because it includes classical and Baroque music, but it also includes some folk inspirations and some world music inspirations. And that all comes together in uh, a concert accordion, or in this case, a digital concert accordion, which allow you to play literally anything. Yeah, this thing sounds pretty different <clears throat> from anyone I've ever heard played on the Lawrence Welk Show. But I do want to bring that <clears throat> up because, you know, when I was a kid, if you played the accordion, you were a super nerd, right? <laughs> yes. No one ever thought it was cool to play the accordion. How did you get over that notion that what I'm doing is actually cool and I not was, nerdy? I was too young. I was too young and I, to actually know that something was supposed to be not cool. I was immune to that just through being young. And then, I don't know, I think that the stereotypes about accordion have changed a lot in North America since the 1960s uh, when it became uncool mm -hmm. uh, to play it. And now anyone under like present day age 40, I would say is a blank slate and is open to learning about the instrument, and particularly with the digital accordion. Mm. It's, it's one of the most versatile instruments in the world. Roland calls it the most advanced synthesizer in the world. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, it's a completely different instrument to what anybody expects. How about Weird Al Yankovic? Was he at all an influence? I certainly know about what he does, <laughs> and I love it. I uh, love his comedy and his parody work. Uh, of course, he's a, a big person on the scene, but what we do is is in a different vein. It sure is, and we'll see some of it in just a few moments. Cornell, I do want to know how this act first got together, though. Well, it seems like this act is still under um, construction. We still <laughs> learn about each other, actually. I just learned why Michael still uses only 12 buttons on this accord. <laughs> <laughs> because he started on a 12-button accord. I don't know what the others do. <laughs> that really is uh, revealing. <laughs> but you're, you're from Poland originally, and you're from Calgary. You're from Calgary originally. So how did this, how did this, how did this happen? tandem get together? It's very <laughs> interesting. It actually did happen through um, Michael's um, accordion professor from the University of Toronto, Mr. Joseph Masarolo, whom I knew uh, through Quartetto Gelato, in which oh, yeah. I was a member. 
And then at some point I was playing with uh, Joe quite a bit. And then at some point Joe said, you know, Cornell, um, I have grandchildren, you know, I have a family. I want to take care of them, spend more time with them. However, I have this young, hot-headed student hot -headed. who would be, yes, <laughs> um, quite appropriate for the kind of show you want to be doing. And why don't you just uh, guys get together? And uh, that was when Michael was at his, what, first year? First university. year undergraduate. So how long yeah. ago was that? What about That'll it? be nine years now. Nine years ago. Yes. Okay, here's the next question then. It's the Bridge and Volak duo, yes. Yes. not Volak and Bridge. You're older. <laughs> yes. You're a professor. He's yes, not. He's not. Yes. So why does he get first billing? Because I have more buttons. <laughs> You have that more buttons on me. Yes. He, he presses <laughs> more buttons. Well, I tell you, this will, this will be very revealing about the duo, this, this mm -hmm. short story. How democratic we are and how much we trust in one another. And, and blind luck. And blind <laughs> luck. So on my tour of China um, some months ago, probably last year at this time, it yeah. was, uh, we had to finally decide on the name that we will be using for publicity and for, for all the media and so on and for our recordings. And we had to decide right away. And I call Michael's cell phone. Turns out he's um, somewhere in the US on tour or something. Somewhere. And we said, Michael, we have to decide right now. And we had a short list of about 100 names. Um, <laughs> That's a short list. <laughs> that was a short list. <laughs> okay. And Michael says, so how are we going to do it? I said, Michael, do you have a coin over there? And uh, he said, sure, I do. And I said, why don't you toss it and uh, pick one side? And if it lands on the other, it's my name first. And if it picks on the one you chose. Uh, and then I put my full trust into Michael's uh, but of course, tossing abilities. Of course, we, we know in the end that luck got it right. <laughs> now, yeah. here's the question. Let me spend a moment here just looking at your, what do you call that again? Digital accordion? Yes. Because there's no piano keys on it, which are like the kind that most people would That's know. That's right, yes. Um, Okay, go, explain. What is that thing? <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> oh, so this, this can be is, long. This is uh, what's called a chromatic keyboard. Uh, instead of a piano keyboard, it's a different layout of the buttons. It means that I actually have more range in less space. Huh. So I switched to this when I was 16. I started with the piano keyboard, but I saw uh, at that point classical music that people were playing on accordion around the world, and I realized that I was playing on what I thought was a, a more limited instrument. So I relearned my alphabet so to speak. It'd be like if you woke up one morning and somebody moved all the keys around on your computer. Mm -hmm. You have the technique to do it, but everything is in the wrong spot. So there's no middle C on that thing? There is. There it's is. this one right there. But ah. you wouldn't know it. No, you would not. It. You would not. Um, can I ask you how much that costs? These would run uh, surprisingly cheap for what it does. This would be under 10,000 Canadian. However, that's just for the shell. Um, then the programming inside, which is what makes it very unique and what I've spent uh, close to a decade now working on in terms of refining my sound on this instrument is all customized. So everyone who has this instrument sounds completely different. Hmm. Gentlemen, a... I think you should take us to church now. The church. And by that I mean <clears throat> it's time that we heard you play. And just to sort of set this up, it will sound like we're in church off the top. But then I urge everybody to stick around because we don't end up in church by the time this song is over. You I want to tell us what this is called? I think, I think I know which song you're referring to. Okay. Michael, will you take sure. a wild guess? Oh, sounds like a little thing we've done called Rock Bach, which was the, the title of our first album. And it, it sort of represented what we were uh, starting to do with classical music, which is to steal it and then completely redesign it. I mean, accordion wasn't invented. In the, in the Baroque era when Bach was around. Clarinet was in an early, early formative stage, nothing like what it is now. Um, so we've done a version that we hope Bach would like for the 21st century. Everything you will hear is 100% live. There's no background music, all the sound we make between the two of us. And, uh, and this the song is great because it can really feature most of the, of the features that Michael is using on the digital accordion, and it also presses some of my technique to the very limit, you know, so. Gentlemen, the stage is yours.
<laughs> wow. That was and a little fist pump to boot. That was absolutely sensational, guys. Wow. I'm glad it was to your liking. It was definitely to our liking. What did we just hear? Well, we just heard the prelude to their first solo cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. So this is written 400 and some odd years ago? Yes, and yeah. for cello. For cello. Solo. Which you don't see. Which you don't <laughs> see. You don't but somehow you guys have rearranged that to make perfect classical and rock and roll sense, or what? Well, there's it's a lot of slashes there. It's hard to <laughs> pick the genre. Up. Exactly, yeah. isn't it, though? I think that's why it connects so well, because it's just indefinable. That's the age of yeah. modern music. I mean, the huh. age of the niche is gone with the major record labels that had everybody in one box or another. Um, and we're proud and happy to be part of the next generation of concert performers who don't respect boundaries at all. But where would you get the notion to take a piece written for cello and decide you're going to rearrange it for two instruments that clearly Bach did not have in mind when he wrote this piece? Well, actually, the inspiration comes from Bach himself. How so? Bach was a master composer and master borrower, so to speak. A lot of the themes that, and motifs that Bach has used for his concerti and for his other um, pieces, uh, choral and instrumental, not only, um, were borrowed either from his own previous pieces, he requote himself, or he would borrow from composers that he knew. Hmm. And he would definitely make all these borrowings and mix them up and rearrange them and re-instrument them. And, um, and he would come up with, uh, with the new ideas. I gotta ask just a couple of technique questions here. That's a workout for you. By the time you're finished, I don't know if you know it, your face is very red. <laughs> well, that's... Um... You are really, there's a lot of air going through you. <laughs> it's breathtaking. It is <laughs> breathtaking, it <laughs> sure is. Well, here's, uh, here's a little technique that I am forced and encouraged at the same time to be using in order to be playing those arrangements, which is something called the circular breathing. Can you do that? Where you, where you blow out and breathe in at the same time? That's what I was doing. This is why I did not stop. You see, this is exactly what I have to go through in order to be able to uh, adhere to the same phrasing as required for, for pieces that were composed for instruments that had a different idiom. Because violin or cello idiom is that the player doesn't have to um, stop for a breath in right. order to keep but going. But I watched you, Corn. I, I, I watched for that circular breathing and I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't tell well, what you were doing. Well, not me. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't tell it was there, the mission was accomplished. That's amazing. Now, how about for you? That, that, how much does that thing weigh? He can breathe. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I, I can, can breathe. breathe. <laughs> how, how much is that? This is relatively light for accordions, about 25 pounds. How do you not have back problems or how do you not have <laughs> like arthritis in your fingers? Because you're really, you've got to work out there too. Well, I have to be very careful. I work out a lot, um, yoga, practices like that, a lot of stretching, a lot of self-care because it is uh, among the more physical instruments hmm. and particularly being on the road and spending, you know, hours at the airport or hours in the car, like it's, and to still get up early and try to go to the gym mm -hmm. when you're on the road and, and take your work with you anywhere. Uh, it's, that's one of the to. hardest parts of touring, actually. Yeah, you, you can't get out of shape or else you can't pick that thing up and then no. the whole thing's off. The good news is actually the act of practicing on it is also a workout ah, okay. to a certain degree. So. Now we established that you're <clears throat> teaching at Queen's. Are you have you finished your PhD yet? No, I'm halfway through my doctorate at University of Toronto. In? Which, in accordion which is the only university in North America where you can do uh, a doctorate in accordion. So uh, a Toronto uh, and Ontario distinction. Isn't that cool? And is all of your training from Eastern Europe originally? Mine? Uh, no, it's actually quite varied. I started in Poland and then I did um, do a lot of commuting to study with professors at Paris Conservatoire, also in Prague. Then I managed to go to New York, study there for a while with um, some renowned clarinetists, and then eventually I ended up doing my master's and part of my DMA at Indiana University, Bloomington in the U.S. Did, did, I don't know if I have this right. Right. Abba Eben, the former Israeli politician, he, wasn't his son one of your teachers? He was my primary teacher and a mentor as well. Huh. And we are still in, in touch. We are very good friends now, professional friends and a wonderful man, and he taught me some real great fundamentals of clarinet playing, and not only that, but 
style and techniques and so on and so on. And after that, only after that, in 2005, I arrived in Toronto where I was studying for two years with Professor Valde Peñas, who is the principal clarinetist of Toronto Symphony. Hmm. And um, that would be my education in a nutshell or so. There are plenty of master classes around the world and, and courses, summer courses and so on and so on, but this is the main universities I attended. Now, just before I tell everybody where you're going to be playing in the days ahead, let me ask you one last question, sure. which is, you're a duet here. But he's, I mean, he's older, he's got more academic credentials, so do I assume that when you two have disagreements about how things go, you have to defer to him? No, 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 we toss the coin. Oh, again <laughs> with the coin. <laughs> Not at all. In fact, no. one of the reasons why our act has been working is not only that we work very well together on a musical level with creative ideas and similar interests and similar loves, but also from the business side and from the touring side, uh, because it's, it's almost like a marriage to be on the road uh -oh. with somebody for a month. Not in that way. <laughs> a very but, straining one. <laughs> but you're, you're together uh, a lot of the time and, you have, and we uh, have to share responsibilities, being in touch uh, with all the concert presenters that we're going to play for when our, when our management is, uh, hands that off to us. So it's, uh, it, we interact in many, many ways. We're on the phone multiple times a day, every day of the year. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's actually a very dynamic and exciting uh, era. Well, let's yeah. tell everybody where you're going. Yes. If, if uh, people are watching us from North Bay, Ontario right now, we should let them know that next month, January 18th, you're going to be at the Capital Centre in North Bay. And then on February 2nd, you're in Aurelia in central Ontario at the Aurelia Opera House. Mm -hmm. And then in March, March 1st, Write this down if you're in Newmarket or any points in York Region. They're at the Visual Performing Arts Centre in Newmarket, Ontario. And then once March gets going, you guys are off to the Midwest in the United States and we don't see you for a long time. That will be a long tour across the Midwest of America mm -hmm. and we will be um, um, performing our Bach to Broadway program. So that's what we will be featuring. Not back to Broadway, but Bach to Broadway. Bach, Bach Broadway. to Broadway. Yes. Well, I got to tell you, I saw you guys, as you know, several months ago for the first time. I thought you were sensational. You didn't do anything here today to dissuade me of that opinion. I Thank still you. hold it. And we're so glad you could spare some time off the tour for us here at TVO tonight. Thank you so much. Thank Our you pleasure. very much. Thank Michael you. Bridge and Cornell Volak. Thank you. Bridge and Volak. And they are great. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.